Coaching Quack Chapter 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Carolina Cabrera 747. Carolina Cabrera 747 was first to say first in one of my recent videos. And that's what's a shout out. So congratulations. Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here. And I have a review of an interesting new drone. This is the XKJ K6 Max drone. Okay, this drone runs for under $30 with shipping included. Okay, now when you hear under $30 with shipping included, um, you should expect that there are going to be some shortcuts made on this particular drone. And we're going to talk about those shortcuts here shortly. But another thing you should expect is that this drone is not for professional use, not meant for professional use, even though I believe they're advertising an 8K camera. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about that 8K camera here shortly, too. Okay, but at this price range, what it is, folks, is it's a beginner's learn-to-fly drone. A beginner's learn-to-fly drone with a camera that actually works, okay? So, you know, it's not the best camera in the world. It's, it is kind of pretty poor camera, okay, at $30. But, um, again, it's for beginner pilots, you know, young young folks who want to learn to fly and want to get a taste of uh, uh, FPV, this will do it, okay? This actually will transmit to your phone. You'll be able to view video on your phone of the drone while it's flying in the air. Now, let's talk about this drone. I'm looking at it. You can say, well, that looks a lot like something that DJI puts out, in, in particular, the DJI Mavic 3 Pro, particularly its camera. Okay, <laughs> look at this camera, folks. Now, for $30, do you think you're going to get a DJI uh, Max or Mavic 3 Pro camera on your drone? No, folks, this is, let's talk about it. Let's take a real close look at these cameras here. This one's fake. This one's fake. It's plugged up. This is the only real camera here, okay? And it's a little pinhole camera. I'm guessing about a 480p sensor, although it, it records and interpolated 720p. I'm guessing it's about 480p is the real sensor in this particular camera. Now, this gimbal does go up or down on it, but it is not a stabilized gimbal, okay? It can uh, point itself downward about 70 degrees. Let's show you that real quick. Turn it on. And it does it remotely, actually, through the controller, which is cool in itself there. But um, the way it does it, you press this button on the controller here, and that kicks the sensor down. It doesn't go all the way down. It goes about 70, 80 degrees max down, and it doesn't go up either. It only uh, comes out level like so. Um, but it has pretty nice lights in the front there. And look at that. Can you see that uh, blinking infrared light? Let's see. There should be one on here, too. That one's blinking, too. So these are emitters, okay? These are obstacle avoidance emitters. I'm going to talk about that here shortly here, folks. Uh, when, when I get to that part of the uh, review. <laughs> okay, so hold on while I turn that off and save battery power in this because I'm going to fly this here shortly. Okay, it, um, it, total weight on this is about 112 grams with the battery installed. That means that this does not require registration in most countries, folks, except for those who have uh, registration requirements for camera drones since this does have a camera. You have to keep that in mind. But most countries, including the U.S., do not require this to be registered. It is a folding drone which makes it highly portable, and it actually does come with a carrying case, a nice little carrying case for this drone in the under, under $30 price range that you can carry the drone and its components and accessories with you wherever you go. Now, in under $30 price range, you're going to expect to get a brushed motor, brushed motor drone, and indeed, these are brushed motors on this particular drone. What does that mean? These drone motors will not last forever, folks. They will fail eventually uh, with time, with use, with crashes, uh, one of them is going to fail. So, um, again, $30 price range. Don't expect to get a drone that's going to last you very long. It's just going to last you long enough so that you learn to fly. That's hopefully learn to fly. Although, if you take care of it, if you give it, you know, if you uh, give it like 15 minutes rest between flights, it does have the potential to last quite a long time because I still have my brush motor. See my, where is it? It's right here. I still have my old SEMA X5C. <laughs> from close to 10 years ago and this still has the original motors in it folks and it still works so if you do baby your motors like i did with my old x5c they will last uh, they could last quite a long time is what i'm trying to say now i must mention brush motor drone another thing about this drone looking at the belly of it let me take a closer look actually yeah <laughs> it has two cameras one of these actually is for a look down camera that you could um take pictures on, on the, through the belly of the camera and the other is an optical flow and i'm guessing the optical flow kit sensor is probably the 
that one there, <laughs> the bigger one. <laughs> what I'm saying is this does have optical flow. And what optical flow does is looks directly beneath the drone and you'll be able, and it using what it sees, it automatically maintains its position. Now this does work. I tried it in indoors. Um, it doesn't work in my basement for some reason, and I think it's the LED lights in my basement. Um, it might not be the right frequency for it. It, it goes wandering uh, big time in my basement. But when I take it in my garage under CFL lights, it works like a champ. It works very well. Or upstairs in my living room, you know, in, in daylight, works very well. Um, outdoors also, it works very well. So we'll demonstrate the optical flow in my garage instead of down here in my test flight facility <laughs> this particular drone um, but again keep in mind if yours is wandering to it's probably the led lights in your home try it finding a spot with different lighting or flying in daylight only um, okay that's about it now let's talk about the obstacle avoidance system it does have obstacle avoidance um, you saw there's little emitters and this is the receiver looking for these blinks and what these do these emitters do is they send a um, infrared uh, ray at a wall or whatever object is nearby and that bounces off and is received by this receptor here and if it sees you know something bouncing off of a particular um, blink from one of these lights here it will automatically uh, prevent the drone from going any further toward that um, object and actually fly away from it now does that work yeah kind of indoors it does kind of work outdoors not at all because of sunlight uh, overpowers that infrared but indoors it does kind of work however it the corrections it makes are quite large okay it'll bounce off when it sees an object it'll go flying off in a di different direction so you got to be careful there is a chance of uh of you crashing and it does it's not 100 percent effective okay <laughs> sometimes it doesn't see anything at all okay it'll keep on going into the wall so don't depend on that entirely to keep yourself uh, from bouncing into objects because you, you know it won't work all the time is what i'm trying to say i use that word a lot trying to say but that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> okay it is powered by 3.7 volt 1800 milliamp per hour battery this supposedly gives it up to 12 minutes flight time we'll verify that when we take it outdoors and do the outdoor portion of the flying now let's talk about that camera since we mentioned only one of these is a real camera actually two you know one of these on the bottom is also a real camera that's used for looked on video but these other two again are fake but um that camera um, it takes videos um, in 720p resolution at 25 frames per second. Um, those videos, you know, it might actually be a 720p camera, I have to admit. Not a very good one, though, but you'll see when, when you see sample videos from this. But again, 720p at 25 frames per second. Um, it can be interpolated. Uh, actually, the photos can be interpolated up to 8K frame but keep in mind they're just frame grabs grabs of that 720p video there's no real uh, advantage to interpolating a uh, enlarging that's electronically enlarging a uh, image okay it's still going to look the same uh, no matter what except there will be a much larger file size so you know you really don't want to interpolate if it's possible to avoid that um, other things about it it uses the hf ufo app on your phone uh, to enable you to see real-time FPV video from this drone. In fact, there's its transmitter for the FPV video. is this little um, antenna right there. Now, it also, um, let's see, what other things about it? Through the controller, <laughs> let's talk about, let's go right into the controller. The controller buttons, you know, this controller is supposed to give you about 100 meters of range. Um, the FPV video range, though, expect to see about 30 meters FPV video, 30 or 40 meters. And the reason being, this uses 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi for that uh, HF UFO app. Everybody's phone has uh, 2.4 gigahertz, so it should work with most people. But the disadvantage of that is that this transmitter is also operating on 2.4 gigahertz. So it's interfering with the Wi-Fi signal from the drone. So expect the, you know, this tra it's a powerful transmitter getting you out to about 100 meters range, but it's going to um, overpower the Wi-Fi signal coming from that drone to your phone. So expect Wi-Fi video ranges of about, I don't know, about 30, 40 meters, and then the control range, again, out to about 100 meters. Now let's talk about the controller. Um, it's your standard toy grade controller. This is throttle. This is uh, yaw. This is pitch. This is roll. The buttons on it, this button here, it has three different rates, 
or uh, speeds, in other words, for the drone, beginner, intermediate, and expert rate. And if you hold it down for about three seconds, this enters into headless mode by holding this button here down. It does flips, you know, where the drone will um, do acrobatics, automatic acrobatics, by pressing this button, then moving the stick right or left, up or down, and the drone will flip in that direction. Uh, it does have one key return also, where the drone will fly the exact opposite direction it was pointed at takeoff by pressing this and holding this button for three seconds. That is not return to home, folks. Do not depend on that to bring the drone back to you. <laughs> it actually can fly away from you if it's off to the right or left or behind you when you press this button. Um, it's just a GWIS feature. Um, I wish they would stop using these, putting these on drones. Nobody uses one key return, trust me. <laughs> but don't depend on that for uh, return to home. Okay, uh, other buttons on it. This is your obstacle avoidance on-off button. Um, it's off by default, but you can turn it on by pressing that button there. These buttons here raise and lower the gimbal of the, the camera of the drone. So if you want to look down, you press this button here a couple of times. If you want to look back up again, you press this button here a couple of times. It does have automatic takeoff and automatic landing, which you activate by pressing this button here. Um, other buttons on it. These are trim buttons for forward, back trim, right, and left trim. And that's about it. It does have a camera holder here. On our switches right here. And it is powered by... I believe three, yeah, three AAA batteries, and they're, look at these high-quality batteries from my local Dollar Tree. <laughs> so, let's go over what you get in the box. You get that uh, carrying case for the drone. You get the drone. You get instruction manual for the uh, drone itself, and instruction manual for the app. Keep in mind, though, uh, one thing about that app, uh, did I, I mention it already? Um, this is advertised with vertical uh, video capability. When they see vertical, they mean you can, uh, you know, get video that is vertically oriented instead of uh, landscape oriented, like this particular video is landscape oriented. Um, that feature has not been implemented yet in the HFUFO app, okay? Um, I've seen it implemented in the advertisement video for this drone, and it has that feature. I've seen the button there. But when you download the actual HFUFO app from Google, that it doesn't have that feature implemented. So, unfortunately... That vertical mode part is not uh, incorporated. Although you can get the look down feature from the bottom camera. Again, you cannot get the vertical video mode from this drone. Um, other things you get in the box, you get the drone, you get the controller, you get one or two batteries depending on which version you order. I got the two battery version. You get a charger for these batteries. By the way, these batteries are charged by a micro USB port right there. Um, I would recommend using a 2 amp wall charger since this is a little bit bigger, 3.7 volt battery, but you can probably still charge this in the la your laptop uh, USB port, although it might take a little more time than a wall charger, quite a bit more time than a wall charger, let's just say that. Um, you get a full set of uh, uh, prop guards. Now, I recommend installing these if you plan to fly this drone indoors, okay, to protect the drone, but if you go outdoors, take these off, these end up being Christmas tree ornament hangers for your drone. If your drone ends up in a tree, it's going to stay up there until Christmas. <laughs> okay, so take these off outdoors is what I'm saying. Um, you get a full spare set of propellers. You get a screwdriver, and um, you also get a screw. Now, what's the screw for? The screw is for the, uh, the choke screw that goes on the back of the battery bay here. Um, they actually removed it, thank goodness. <laughs> so... For me, I, I don't know, maybe they're doing it for everybody, but it came in the bag with the screwdriver, so let's keep that in mind. So, uh, I think I've covered just about everything. Let's take this drone out into the field, folks, and see how it flies. So, hope you enjoy this flight. We're going to start in my uh, garage first, do an indoor flight, and then we'll go out, outdoors and see how it flies outdoors. So, I hope you enjoy these flights. Okay, good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to the Quadcopter 101's indoor flight test facility number two my garage uh, we're in here because this thing needs a lot of room to fly um and that's why we're here um, i took it in my basement and this kind of wanders a bit and i'm going to show you what that issue is so let's turn it on turning the drone on and turning on the controller it should be bound let me double check to make sure it is we got a steady light it is bound okay let's put it on a flat level surface and we're going to take off manually Throttling up. Going to second rate. 
Now, I recommend flying in second rate. Uh, first rate is just too slow, not very reactive to the controls. But right now, the optical flow system seems to be working real well, as we can see here. Okay, it's, it's holding its position. But the problem is, let me go up a bit higher. If we turn it, it starts to drift. Turn it to the other direction, it'll start to drift, but it'll catch on after a while. Now let's turn on that optical flow. Coming back, press, well, let's see. <laughs> there we are there. The optical flow, you gotta be careful with the sticks. You gotta hold it and then yeah, see it after a while, it picks up a drift. The optical flow system is trying to fight it. And going forward, and I ain't doing that, <laughs> and we crash. <laughs> so, and I think I, no, I hope I didn't break it. <laughs> no, I don't think I did. But see, it, it picks up a drift, is what I'm saying, folks. Outdoors, that drift um, eventually stops, and the optical flow system kicks in. But indoors, you don't have the room, for, or the luxury of that room, to allow that optical flow system to kick in, <laughs> okay? It takes a while. Okay, the battery came out. Let me push that battery back in. Got to restart it. But let's give it another shot because I want to try the, or demonstrate at least the um, obstacle avoidance feature. So turning on the controller and manual take off again. Second rate. Okay, optical flow kick in. There you go. Come back slowly. Come back slowly. So you start moving and the optical flow kicks in. I'm trying it, but I didn't. what's it doing, folks? Oh! <laughs> Come back to me. Let go and it boomerangs back. Let's bring it all the way back here. Let's see if that optical flow kicks in. Uh... So I'm going to land it. I'm going to start over again because I'm going to. I want to demonstrate that op or obstacle avoidance. Okay, we land it, and let's calibrate the gyros. Maybe that'll help some. There, that did it. And automatic, no, not automatic takeoff, manual takeoff again. Two, okay. Now let's turn on obstacle avoidance. It's sensing the wall on the right here, I believe. Let's move it to the right. It don't want to go to the right. To the left, don't want to, or slowly. Okay, when you're in obstacle avoidance mode, um, you're in low rate. It doesn't let you go to higher rate. Let's see if we can get it to move. Nope. And you can't, okay, we're moving to the left. Okay, now it's sensing. Okay, the beeping has stopped. Let's see if it'll sense my hand. At least move away from my hand. Well, it senses my hand, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, how about my head? Coming into my head. No. Oh, there. That time it did. Okay, it countered it, getting out of the way of it. So it has a delay. The obstacle avoidance, it works, but it's not very dependable okay do not depend on this to keep you away from objects because it just might not <laughs> okay indoors can this do a flip <laughs> no 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 come back here obstacle point is off there Okay, obstacle avoidance is off. Bring it back down. So again, you know, this is not <laughs> dependable indoors. Okay, it'll drift quite a bit. Okay, let's rotate it and see if we got any problems with optical flow there after rotating. No. Moving to the left, letting go. And obstacle or optical flow seemed to kick in there. Pulling back, letting go and optical flow kicks in again now if it moves a lot if i pull it back a lot optical flow kicks in okay so right now it's proving me a liar but i did have a lot of difficulty with this uh flying indoors 
particularly. Let's see if I can do any maneuverable flying with it now. Now you keep in mind you can't turn off optical flow. Okay, it's flying around indoors now. And let it go of the sticks. And stop for me. Okay. <laughs> In the previous problems I had with optical flow still seem to be acting up right now, but it did before. <laughs> come and die a bit. Come down, come down, come down. Stay away from my uh, garage door opener. Okay. Let's turn on optical obstacle avoidance one more time. Now let's see if I can hit the wall. Going forward slowly. There, it stopped it. Obstacle avoidance off. Off. Okay. Now, if it starts drifting on you with that obstacle avoidance is on, you really don't have much control on this in, with obstacle avoidance on because you're in low rate, and that low rate is very slow. You want to be in second rate for indoor flying. Um, that seems to work the best for maneuverability. And there goes the battery. <laughs> and that's the flight time you get. <laughs> so, okay, that's an indoor flight. Let's take it outdoors and see how it flies outdoors, folks. I think it'll be a little bit better outdoors. So, hope you enjoy the second part of this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101, and welcome to a beautiful day here to fly the XKJ K6. Now, I apologize, folks. There's a wood chipper going on off in the background over there on the other side of those trees. Can't do anything about that today, but uh, hopefully the noise isn't too much to bother us here. But to start this up, we're going to turn it on by pressing that button there. Make sure it's flashing and then putting it on a flat level surface and turning on the controller. Now, next thing I need to do is open up the app and in the app, you can connect to the Wi-Fi signal from the drone. I better uh, <laughs> open that right now and do such. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, this is the HF UFO app available on Google Play and on the App Store. And to start the drone and get it in the air, we're going to give it a takeoff. Uh, but it's windy today, so I am going to try to counter any drift at takeoff with this right stick. And then I'm going to slowly let go of the right stick to let the uh, optical flow system take over. So, and also, let's start recording the video, too, so we can see video. So, take off. And let's let it sit there for a bit and see if it drifts any. Well, it's holding its possession quite well. Okay, I gotta say that. Let's get in the picture here. Come down a little and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? As you can see, this camera's not the best. Okay, <laughs> hey, while we're here, let's do a quick flip, test this flip. Flip capability, left flip, forward flip, and back flip. So yeah, I could flip. <laughs> so we're up there, let's lower that gimbal. Let's see if it can see me here on the ground. Too low. Oh, it's drifted. It's drifted with the wind. Going to higher rate. Push it forward. Third rate. Yeah, the wind's hitting it there, and then it started drifting. Let's see if we can uh, get that optical flow to work again. Okay, lowering the gimbal. Trying to get myself in the picture. There I am. Hello, up there. Okay, it's holding its position by itself. So the optical flow is working. It's a little bit sketchy, I admit. <laughs> it'll, it'll come on and come off. Sometimes you have to counter it. I recommend going to higher rate though. Don't leave it in that low rate. Uh, it tends to you know, get away from you if you leave it in the low rate. Okay, let's see, what else? Let's lower, raise the gibble back up again. And um, we're in high rate. Let's go up a bit higher. And go over here and I'm going to rotate show the camera <laughs> slow rotate slow rotate notice as you rotate this thing picks up a weird drift but we're gonna fight that by we're gonna fly normal okay let's see how maneuverable this is I am I am in high rate and we're gonna see if this is a maneuverable flyer yeah come a little lower because we're pretty far up so you know again this is meant for beginners to learn to fly it's a very cheap drone very inexpensive drone uh, but um, 
you know, for under $30 price range, you're not going to get a cinematic drone at all. There's, it's just ain't going to happen. Um, it's just going to be a beginner's basic drone like this one. Um, right now, it's kind of fighting me. Let's see if I can get that optical flow system working again. There we go. Optical flow kicked in. Or it did for a second there. <laughs> okay, let's hold its position again. So let's lower that gimbal one more time. Find me on the ground. There I am from way up there. And again, it's flying itself. <laughs> okay. Got a slight breeze. That breeze is picking up. So let's raise that gimbal back up again. And start the video recording again because the video recording stopped. Now, when this lo uh, loses signal, when you get outside of 20 meters range, like I did there a couple times, I guess, it'll drop the video recording. So let's come back down again and make sure you guys did see me in my tie-dye today. Prescott Beach Bum. <laughs> okay. Um, it's staying up there by itself. Raising the gimbal back up again. And the wind is picking up, so let's fly it. Just see how it flies. There's its flight capability. Now I'm at high rate. Yeah, the low rate there on this is really, really slow. And it'll get you into trouble with that um, optical flow acts up. Because it does, this optical flow does act up. Especially indoor flying. <laughs> it, it'll drift. But outdoors, it's okay. It's an okay flyer. I got a good wind here. The wind is about, uh, I don't know, five, six miles per hour. Okay, let's come around this way into the wind. But let's plop it there. Let's see if it if it's it will uh, once again optical flow will take over. How long does it take for the optical flow? Oh, there it goes. Optical flow kicked in. So let's turn it toward me. There I am on the ground. Now it's drifted a bit. Optical flow is going to kick in again. Lower the gimbal. Lower the gimbal. Come on. There I am. So, yeah, there we go again. So, yeah, again, for under $30, you know, it is a reasonable drone. Um, I don't recommend it for indoor flying because of the drift problem of that optical flow system. You really can't fight that. Um, it's really, when indoors, when it kicks in, it'll start to drift. And um, if you try to fight it, you'll work, it'll work temporarily. But once you let go of the stick, it goes bonkers. Outdoors here, where you got the room to let it slide around a bit before the optical flow kicks in, yeah, it works out here. But an in, indoor flyer, I don't recommend this for indoor flying at all because of that optical flow. Um, even with the uh, um, obstacle avoidance on this, that optical flow, you know, overtakes that obstacle of avoidance and causes problems indoors. So, so oh no, can I flip anymore? No, that means the batteries are probably getting low. And yes, looking here, let's look. The lights are blinking. Let's stop the video recording while I can here, because I want to take a quick pic. Oh, too late. <laughs> I was going to take a picture, but. You, you're not missing anything with those pictures, folks. They're just screen grabs of the uh, here, uh, emergency stop. <laughs> they're just screen grabs, frame grabs of the video. So, and there goes the uh, the app because of low battery. So, not a, you know, it's a beginner's drone, under thirty dollars, reasonable for what it is. Keep in mind that's what you know, an under thirty dollar drone. You're not going to get true cinematic. You're not going to get a DJI true DJI Mavic 3. <laughs> it's not going to happen, folks. <laughs> so, again, that's the K6 drone. I hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. <music>